Hi everybody, I'm back today with another project I created on MDS from Stampin' Up! and used my e-cutter to create with paper. It's um, a little gift card holder that I created for a little boy's birthday that my daughter's going to. It's a, a summer party, summer beach party he's having. So you can see it holds candy and a gift card. The first thing that you need to do is go to your MDS and you can open up really any size page that you want. Um, I have a whole selection here of pages. I just keep adding on pages and saving them as the same file. Um, this is the bucket shape that we're going to make and all it is is a bunch of punches. The first punch you need is, that's not it, let's see, this one right here. This is the cupcake bottom of um, the, the two-step cupcake punch. And I'm going to make it a little bit longer, stretch it out, kind of looks like a popcorn container. And I like to fill all of my punches in with black. I just feel like it makes you be able to see it a little bit better. I also tried something different with this, just adding a black mat, seeing if it would smooth the edges a little bit. You'll see why in a little while. Then I need an I need a half circle, and I don't have a punch that's a half circle, so I'm going to get my circle punch just from your basics, and I'm going to crop it. So I'm going to drag right here. I'm sure there's different ways to make this. It's just punch art, really, but this is how I'm doing it. Drag right there, get a half circle. I crop it and where did it go let's see Oops, sorry crop shape no that's not it we want to okay sorry all right now I can see that I cut it off a little bit there so let's redo that I need to make sure that I drag that a little bit further over and now this is going to be part of my handle so just think about the arc really of this how big we want that handle, I think that's going to be about right. We can readjust it in a little while. Um, I can also see that I didn't crop it all the way up. So let's do that. There, now it looks perfect. Now, I'm going to fill this with, actually I'm not going to fill it yet. I'm going to Control C, Copy, Control V, Paste. And now I want to click this front one. I, I'm going to fill it with white because this is going to be the contrast so that all you can see there of the handle. Do you see how I did that? Now I'm going to click on the back one, color fill it with black, and I've got that. And you can see I probably need to spend some more time fixing my crops, but for time's sake I'm just going to let it be like that. Now I'm going to adjust it to see how wide I want it. And when I have it the way I want it, I'm going to select the first one, hold down my control key. I'm using a PC. It's different on a Mac. I'm not sure. Uh, but you're going to hold down your control key and click that back image so that you have both of them selected. Then I'm going to group them. You can either do control G or up here you can find arrange and group. Now these are going to move around as one piece. In a minute I'll be able to adjust it the size that I want. But now I need this round part to my bucket, so I'm going to get, whoops, I got a, an oval punch. And you can see it's in the back, so I need to bring it up to the front, control, up arrow. And I'm going to drag it. Let's get it the right size so it looks like this is a bucket. All right, that looks about right. Okay, now I'm going to color fill that with black again and again I'm going to add a mat. I didn't do that up here but that's okay. Um, now you can do it up there but I'm going to show you something in a minute. It probably doesn't really matter. I just I was trying it out yesterday. Um, I'm going to control C, control V, copy and paste another one of these ovals. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller but this time we need it to be white so that it looks like it's the hole in the bucket and you're going to drag it around until you get it just right. Now I'm going to bring that handle down and I need to readjust the size. So I'm going to drag that up, bring it down a little bit, and you can play with it just like you would with your regular punches until you have it just right. Okay, and I think I like that. So one thing I do want to show you that I did um, yesterday, you can, when you add a punch, you can. Uh, I don't know, let's see how you say it. You can 
change the, the actual shape of a punch. So I'm going to edit. And I kind of wanted my punch, my bottom of my bucket, a little bit skinnier. So I drug these little handlebars in a little bit. And you don't have to do it. Um, it's kind of a pain. You can see all these little edit points. But for my sample, I did do this. I don't think it's necessary, um, but I thought I would show you anyway if you feel like your bucket's not skinny enough at the bottom. And then you would click Bucket, and you would save it. But I'm not going to do that because I already did it. So, but you can see, I mean, I think that this is okay. I might want to make it a little bit shorter. And I probably, if you want to ungroup, Control Shift G, I want to this front shape right here. I think I want that a little bit skinnier for that handle. Okay, so now here you have your punch art. You're ready to export it to your e cutter. I'm going to, first, I need to come over here and save. Okay, just save it. And because I have all these pages down here, you can see all the different things that I've made. I am going to export it as a JPEG. Um, I'm going to export pages, and it's going to show me all the pages that I have right here. Change pages. I don't want all of these today, and I don't want to wait for it to save all of those as JPEG. So I would click the one that I want and click OK. And it already exists. Yes, I'm going to rechange it because yesterday I had something else in there. And make sure you have it as a JPEG. I think a PNG would work too, but I'm not for sure. So I'm going to stick with JPEG. So I'm going to finish it. Okay. So now I come over to my eCutter software. If I can find it. There it is. And I already have it on here, but let me show you how I did that. I went file, merge, and I you know, navigates wherever my computer saved it, and it's looking for silhouette files. It's not a silhouette file, it's a JPEG. So I have to click it, and then I double click it, and there it is. That's what I made. So I'm going to decide how big I want this. I believe each one of these squares is an inch, so I believe mine was seven inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a little bit shorter, like that. Actually, you know what I want to do is like this to keep that shape. All right. So now I need to highlight it, and we're going to select the trace area. One thing that I found, first of all, let me point this out. This little thing popped up when I inserted this image because it says it's too low of a resolution. Um, this design may print in low resolution, causing pixelation in the printed artwork. And let me show you what happened, and I had to do some research to figure out how to fix this. You highlight it, okay, that was this tool right here, and then you trace. And when I took it off, you can see that there's two lines. So my cutter is going to cut two lines, and they're close together, and it's going to make it messy, and it just wasn't going to work. So I had to figure out, I played around, found out what I needed to do. Over here, I'm going to select. And this happens on some images, and I don't know why. And some images, it doesn't. So you'll have to play around to see you know, which one is going to work for you. I took off that high pass filter and you can see it colors it all in yellow. It kind of gives it a smooth look. Now I want to make sure that all those little gray lines are gone for the most part. So I'm going to put up my high pass filter enough to where I feel like we've got more yellow in there. I think we're good. Now I'm going to do trace and cut it and when I pull it off there we have just one line. I don't know why it does that. but it does. Now, that's the front of the bucket. I need a back of the bucket. And I only need this part, really. So what I'm going to do is, well, I'll show you what you can do. I didn't do it this way, but next time I would. I would only select this part to, to cut. Okay, but what I did is I cut it like this, and that's okay, too. So this time I'm going to choose Trace Outer Edge. And when I pull it off, it's just the shadow, so that's the back piece. Now, I wanted to do my handle in a different color. Let's look at the picture. I want to do my handle in orange. So, let's go back over here. And, whoops. Make sure we're still recording. Yes, okay. And I'm going to drag this down. Now, this time I only need the handle. So, it doesn't matter that it's hanging off the mat, okay? And I'm going to select the trace area. Come over here like this. And I only need the handle, okay? So I'm just tracing that part. And again, I'm going to do that high, take off the high pass filter, turn it up some, make sure I get all those smooth lines, and I'm going to trace. 
So when I pull the bucket away this time, now you can see it's going to cut just this handle part. And I ended up cutting that off with my scissors. So when you load up your mat, you can easily count. I saw that I needed a piece of Pacific Point that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches by one, two, three, four, five. And these grid lines match up with my mat, so I was able to put my paper exactly where it goes. And I cut that one in Pacific Point also, and I did this one in Tangerine Tago. Now, when I have my mat loaded into my machine, all I'm going to do is go right here, send to the silhouette, and I don't have mine hooked up, so that's why it says that, and I would click cut. And it's pretty easy. From there, you have your basic, you know, paper art die cut. Um, this bucket also has a tag. The tag is from Chalk Top Framelits, and I just inked Whisper White with the Positively Chevron stamp in um, Tangerine Tango. And then I have a six-sided sampler, the Hexagon in Daffodil Delight, and the Sketched Birthday, Happy Birthday uh, banners also in Pacific Point. I used, I took some of the, um, I think it's so saffron, I don't think it's Daffodil Delight, the, chev, the yellow chevron ribbon, and I cut it in half long ways so that it would be kind of fringy, and I tied it around. You can see here, I, I do recommend using sticky strip along this edge right here because it'll be strong, and then you can put um, your candies and your gift card or whatever in there, um, and I did use a sponge to ink the edges so that it looks like it was round. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. This is a fun project for summertime. It could be a party favor. You can see how that hole is open. It'd be a great party favor or even just a gift card holder. Thanks so much for stopping by.